in all these times of instability with the world being a crazy crazy place little places like this if you can make one or find some space for a little shop to make some stuff can really help you stay sane seriously can being able to come in here shut the door ignore the world fiddle around with something probably cut myself in various different places which i seem to have done a little bit of in the last couple of months but that's another story entirely which you probably don't want to hear um coming in here and being able to fiddle around with some various bits of woodwork projects or any kind of projects is a real release from the world because it means that you don't have to think about anything it allows you just to focus on what you're doing for now it allows you to keep in the moment a lot more than pretty much anything else i've ever done as a hobby and i've had a lot of hobbies so don't underestimate how little space you need to be able to actually do something in, a, in the maker world which is a nice new buzz term at the moment by the sounds of it being able to use our hands for things and actually get back down to basics again i think you know what i mean just helps keep us grounded in these crazy times um the media is full of stuff the schools are all weird work is all weird i work at home now all the time which is great in some states in some cases but i miss the people as well but some of the people not all of the people but you know having a space where you can do this sort of stuff is absolutely priceless and it doesn't matter whether it's a tiny little space and this is quite big compared to some people's sheds you see a lot of videos with people with enormous workshops and everything else that's not most of us we only have these tiny little spaces and quite a lot of the time we have to share that space with other things that we need to store like bikes and mowers and cans of petrol and all sorts of stuff that you have to kind of have every day. If you have a family and you have a garden, you're lucky enough to have a garden, which we do, then these spaces are really, really important for that. But keep a little sanctuary for yourself where you can do stuff with your hands. That's my main advice for keeping sane through these times doing stuff with your hands connects you with the moment far more than anything else can making things just is a primal thing that humans are built to do we are a tool maker that's why we've got to where we are now rightly or wrongly or good or bad or however you want to see it don't let that go even if you've never done anything like this before I thought I'd do a little bit of a shop tour around my tiny teeny workshop just so you can kind of see the challenges that I've got in here and some of my solutions for it. Now bear in mind I thought I was going to tidy up before this but I thought no I'm just going to show you exactly what it is. This is who I am right right now this is who I am. Maybe sometime in the future in a couple of weeks let's say I can do another video of a really tidy workshop that'll be amazing. And a good follow-up and if there is going to be one i'll put a link up here or is it here or there or down there warts and all this is my shop tour as you can see everything is on wheels i have to be able to move things around to be able to use them in a lot of cases so for instance if i want to use the bandsaw at the back it has to go in that position if i want to use the jointer or the planer the bandsaw has to scoop out the way and then i bring the other one forward so i have the space so there's a lot of Chinese puzzle sliding square thing, you know? This is a problem area for me. This is a big old shelf that was on the wall before I did the dust collection system and I've not had a chance to find a home for it yet because for some reason I think my walls get smaller as time goes on. Maybe it's the rain we've had, they shrink, get less space to put things, bit of a nightmare. So I need to figure out some sort of solution, either put this back on the wall somewhere or not. It's like a bit like tipping point this area here. Have you ever seen that game show, you know, where you put the coins in and they slide backwards and forwards, you wait for someone to fall off the front. We hope it's not sore, it lands on your foot and everything else. This is a horrible old cupboard that was in here when I got here um, in one of the original sheds uh, and things go in here to, to die basically. There may be even dead things in there, I'm not actually sure. I think I'm going to shut that now just in case. I actually have a really nice replacement chest of drawers for here. I just need to do it and bring it in, get rid of this thing. Probably have a nice ceremonial fire somewhere where I can burn it, uh, sing some songs, drink some beer at the same time. That'd be really good. I've tried to keep all my nails and things up here. It's funny, I don't really use nails. I don't know why we have so many nails. 
Why do I have so many nails? I don't know. I think I probably use these little tack nails occasionally, but since I got a nail gun, brad nail gun, I don't probably use them at all really. So I could probably fix a lot of that by putting that, oh, I could put it in there. I do a lot of stuff in the house with the electrics, obviously allowed work. You have to be very careful when you're doing electrics in your own house to make sure that it's allowable work. In the UK, it's really, really strict. You have to be very careful what you do and you need to check the rules before you try anything. I've had a few situations where I need to rewire sockets and things. I have some sensors up here for checking electrics. The electrics in the house when we got here were pretty ropey, so that was another good investment, really. These things are brilliant. There's dust everywhere. Uh, I think they're, they're something like £50 a piece, so they're quite a bit. The peace of mind that these things give you, that the electrics is, the sound is amazing. Uh, not even the electrics that you might have been doing, but the electrics that might be in the house already. Just if you're doing anything like that, get one of these. I'll see if I can find the link and again, put it in the bottom. Someone told me once, I can't remember whether it was on a video or whether it was somebody I was talking to, that 80% of woodworking is sharpening and sharp tools. So I keep a lot of, all my sharpening stuff is in here, except for the grinder, which is obviously behind the camera. Um, and that I actually managed to keep reasonably organized. Amazing that that is. If anyone is gonna ask me, which main tool should I get from my shop first, if you've got a limited budget and you need a saw, I wouldn't recommend getting a miter saw. I have one over there stuck in the back of the shop because it just takes up too much space. I would really seriously recommend getting a table saw. This is a, I think they call it a site, an on-site table saw because it's small, it has a small footprint, it's on wheels and it, it's, it doesn't take up much space, which is a bit of a problem actually, because if you've ever used a table saw, the space you need for it is not determined by the size of the table saw, it's determined by the size of the great big pieces of lumber that you're trying to cut up with it. Now, if you ever try to cut up a large piece of plywood, and I mean like 2.4 meters by, what is it, 1.2 meters, um, don't use one of these for it. It's incredibly dangerous to try to do that. They're not designed for doing things that big. These are more for smaller pieces of work. Having said that, they're incredibly versatile. It's really amazing what these things can actually do if you know what you're doing with it. You can make all sorts of jigs and sleds for these things. They have slots in here, which are really, really useful. Uh, you can make things like this which is a, a, a cross-cut sled. You'll see these on a lot of videos probably from a lot of people. This is what I really need to remake. There's probably a good opportunity for a video there because I've learned an awful lot since I made this one a couple of years ago and there's a lot of really good ideas on YouTube actually for these so have a hunt around. I need to make one that fits my purposes and my use, my use cases most use cases. You can tell I'm a software engineer. So if you've got one of these, always put the blade down. Top safety tip. If you've got one of these, making cross cuts on the table saw is just so much safer and easier than using this sort of thing in the channel, which does work very well. But it's not, this is obviously not the one for this. But these things keep your hands out of the way much better than these do. And hands out of the way of a table saw is a brilliant idea. You need to be very, very careful. It's a large spitting piece of metal with very, very sharp edges on it, which is obviously the point. You can also do mitre cuts on this. My mitre sled actually uh, got accidentally sawed in half. Don't ask. So one of the other things I need to do is to build a crosscut sled, which I can put a mitre jig into, which is my kind of ideal, because these things take up a lot of space. And as you can see, I don't have anywhere to put this. So when I'm not using it, it normally goes on the floor down the side, or it goes on the bench over there, and it can really get in the way. My main wood storage is up here. There's a lot of stuff in here. 
because I built the workshop, I know where all the reinforced pieces are. So it's pretty strong. Um, nothing's ever fallen down, which is a really good thing. This is a solid fixed edge, so nothing will fall on my head when I'm grubbling around looking for my tape measure on the floor. This is my lovely bandsaw, which was an eBay purchase uh, not long ago, a few weeks ago, and it's it's just a great thing. It's probably 15 years old. It doesn't look like it's seen much work in its lifetime, and I absolutely love it. I didn't know how much I would use it until I had it here. Attached to the side is the remote control for the dust system, which is a brilliant, brilliant idea that I got off another YouTube video, which I can't remember the channel of, I'm afraid. I'll see if I can find a link for it and I'll stick it in the description below. That's about it for today. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and like and leave me a comment as well. And we'll see you next time.